Good morning. Uh, I'd like to read a couple of things that uh, I think are what uh, epitomize Memorial Day. So if you'll bear with me. And if you don't want to listen, uh, I suggest that you just shut it off now. Here we go. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that this nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But, in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note no longer remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the greater task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. General John A. Logan's Memorial Day Order. General Order Number 11, Headquarters, Grand Army of the Republic, Washington, D.C., May 5, 1868. Number 1, the 30th day of May, 1868, is dedicated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land. In this observance, no form of ceremony is prescribed, but posts and comrades will in their own way arrange such fitting service and testimonials of respect as circumstances may permit. We are organized, comrades, as our, our regulations tell us, for the purpose, among other things, of preserving and strengthening those kind and fraternal feelings which have bound together the soldiers, sailors, and marines who united to suppress the late rebellion. What can aid more to assure this result than by cherishing tenderly the memory of our heroic dead who made their breasts a barricade between our country and its foes? Their soldier lives were the revelry of freedom to erase in chains and their death a tattoo of rebellious tyranny in arms. We should guard their graves with sacred vigilance. All that the consecrated wealth and taste of the nation can add to their endowment and security is but a fitting tribute to the memory of her slain defenders. Let no wanton foot tread rudely on such harrowed grounds. Let pleasant paths invite the coming and going of reverend visitors and fond mourners. Let no vandalism of avarice or neglect, no ravages of time, testify to the present or to the becoming generations that we have forgotten, as a people, the cost of free and undivided republic. If other eyes grow dull and other hands slack, and other hearts cold in the solemn trust, I shall keep it well as long as the light and warmth of life remains in us. Let us then, at the time appointed, gather around their sacred remains and garland the passionless mounds above them with choicest flowers of springtime. Let us raise above them the dear old flag they say from dishonor. Let us, in this solemn presence, renew our pledges to aid and assist those whom they have left among us as sacred charges among the nation's gratitude, the soldiers and sailors, widow and orphan. Number two, it is the purpose of the commander-in-chief to inaugurate this observance with the hope that it will be kept up from year to year 
While a survivor of the war remains to honor the memory of his departed comrades, he earnestly desires the public press to call attention to this order and lend its friendly aid in bringing it to the notice of comrades in all parts of the country in time for simultaneous compliance therewith. Number three, department commanders will use every effort to make this order effective. By command of John A. Logan, Commander-in-Chief, signed by his N.P. Chipman, Adjutant General. That's what Memorial Day is about. <laughs>